So good morning, everybody. A very warm welcome from my side. I think most of you know me already. Uh, my name is Ko Yamamoto, and um, I'm uh, really pleased today to introduce the all-new Civic Thai Party today on behalf of the entire development team. Finally, the day has come that you are also going to get driving the car, and I believe you all shiver with anticipation. And before we actually start driving, I would like to give you a small insight into the technology which stands behind the Civic Type R. I think you all know the Type R finds its origin in Honda's racing activity. It embodies the whole Honda racing DNA, and the R from Type R also stands for racing. And the red crimson Honda emblem, this is also uh, an homage to the red Japanese flag, which was placed on the hood on the RA272, where Honda's Formula One activity started back in 1964, just one year after Honda has started producing cars. Unbelievable. And uh, one year later, 1965, also won the first Mexican Grand Prix. The Type R history started in 1992 with the NSXR, as you know, and since then there have been a lot of iconic Type R models, very famous, the DC2, the Integra Type R, but also the Accord Type R, which was only introduced in Europe. And since then there had also been quite some iconic Civic Type Rs, and uh, yeah, today we find our latest iteration on this. Starting with the concept, um, the grand concept of the new Civic Type R is called Ultimate Sport 2.0. Why 2.0? Because this is an update to the 2017 original Ultimate Sport concept, but with an update on some of the hardware. Basically, the hardware we utilize is the same, but there have been quite some improvement and optimization. What I also would like to emphasize is that in former times, the Type R had made some sacrifice and compromise in terms of comfort and environment. But the second generation of Type R, starting with the 2017, we are actually maintaining also these practical and uh, daily usage qualities, but still enhance dynamic performance to its ultimate level. The packaging, as a direct comparison in dimensions against the previous generation, the Civic Type R has become longer, 37 millimeters, and also the wheelbase. So the majority of the increasing length comes to the wheelbase by a 35 millimeter increase. And this, of course, brings a lot of stability, especially at high speed. What is also significantly changed is the rear and front track, 26 millimeter in the front and even 30 millimeter at the rear. This, of course, brings high cornering stability. Now let's uh, move over to dynamic performance. You can actually divide the attributes in three categories. One we call speed. This is basically all the specification, like the number one power to weight ratio or the highest top speed within the front wheel driven segment, but also the maximum cornering force. Then what we call the sensual, this is what you can actually feel as a driving performance, uh, powerful, responsive, linear acceleration, but also a steering feel and a shift feel, and also the exciting engine sound. And third, and this is very important, to be quick with the car, is the confidence, where you need also a lot of stability, but also responsive and solid brake performance. As you can see, in all area, the new Civic Type R has exceeded the predecessor significantly. Now let me explain some of the details on the hardware we have optimized and improved against the pre predecessor. Um, Honda's engine um, have been always renowned for having a very high um, power output, but also being very responsive. 
And uh, this is thanks to the Honda Core technology, the VTEC. Um, technology, but also the lightweight um, technology for all the reciprocating masses. So that um, the Type R's in the past, they were easily exceeding this 100 PS per liter benchmark. And we had a big jump in 2015, where we introduced the turbo engine for the first time. We are talking about um, 155 PS per liter. And today with the FL5, we have reached a level of 165 PS per liter. The engine itself, this is the basically the, the, the hard piece of, of the new Civic Type R. Basically the same hardware, but we have done um, some major optimization on components in order to really squeeze out the maximum performance from each single component. 390 PS maximum output and 420 Newton meter of torque. This is an increase of 20 Newton meter. And uh, maybe careful readers, they have recognized that the Japanese spec Type R has a 330 PS output. This one PS we had to sacrifice for the petrol particulate filter to cope with European requirements or regulation requirements. 0 to 100, 5.4, and a top speed of 275. That speaks for itself. Well, what, would they do, what did, did we actually do um, at the end on the engine? Um, we first improved the turbo performance. Um, this is both effective for output, but also for the response. So we improved the efficiency and reduced also the inertia of the turbine by reducing the number of blades, but also optimizing the shape of the blades and the diameter. Um, and we also optimize the shape of the housing. And for the aspiration of the engine, it's very important to optimize the intake and the exhaust at the same time. Only what can go out can come in. And therefore, we have also improved the um, intake flow by 10% by increasing the diameter. We have reduced the um, pressure loss in the intercooler by increasing the stages from nine to 10 stages. And we have also straightened the exhaust um, pipes in order to reduce back pressure. Also, the ECU control has raised um, in performance um, by improving the or increasing actually the resolution of the control so that we can maintain an advanced ignition timing for a wide area. Shift fuel. So when I drove the uh, previous generation, I thought, well, you can actually not further um, improve this shift field, but the engineers actually um, proved me wrong. Um, they have done um, further improvement on the shift field itself. Um, they made a more rigid feel, but also they reduced and minimized the free play in especially the lateral direction to have a really um, exact and accurate steer um, shift field by um, designing a dedicated shift link mechanism for the Civic Type R, and also optimizing especially the, the radius around the shift gates in order to um, enable a very smooth shift, especially in the diagonal direction, so from two to three or from four to five. You will feel that immediately when you drive the car. The flywheel has also seen some weight reduction. Um, these blue area, they are all material we have actually removed from the flywheel in order to make it 18% lighter. But by reducing the weight, especially at the outer circumference, we could even reduce the inertia more by 25%. And by reducing the weight on the flywheel, of course, the engine rev up response will become much better so that now we can also um, perform the so-called auto blip function, the ref match um, function from second to one, um, second to first shift down, which was not possible for the previous generation. 
Now coming to the platform, also here a small recap. We started with the center tank layout, a very lightweight um, configuration with the H-beam, um, with the FK2. And from there, when we introduced the FK8, um, we used a new um, procedure. We actually designed an inner frame which was extremely rigid and then we just put an outer shell on top um, rather than trying to get the rigidity with the outer shell. And that actually increased the torsional rigidity by 38%. And from there to the current, the new Civic Type R, we actually also improved or increased the amount of um, so-called structural adhesives nearly by a factor four um, in order to improve further the torsional rigidity by another 15%. Using structural adhesives, you know, has the benefit that you can really um, get a um, very tight connection on a surface instead of a line by welding. And um, this very rigid um, construction comes with nearly no increase in weight. Aerodynamics. So these red parts are the exclusive type, of type bar. Aero parts. Um, I've also put the effect of each single aero part in brackets in Newton. Um, these are basically the so-called um, downforce figures at 200 kilometers an hour. Um, the engine hood, of course, is obviously completely different with the um, air intake duct, but also the front bumper, the significant rear wing, rear diffuser and side sill spoiler. Um, if you consider the Earth gravitation to be 10 meter per square second instead of 9.81, then you can just divide this by 10 and then you have the kilogram. Uh, just maybe you can have a, a better feeling with kilogram. So in total, against the base EHEV Civic, we could increase the downforce by 900 newtons. This is um, nearly 90 kilogram, so that the Civic Type Pod definitely comes into the so-called downforce zone. It is actually creating real downforce. Now talking about the chassis. Also here we have seen quite some improvement over the years. Um, from the FK2, we have introduced the so-called dual axis strut front suspension. Um, this is in order to minimize the torque steer. This is very important for a high performance car, especially if you have the front wheels driven. The dual pinion EPS with variable gear ratio and of course the adaptive damper. They were all introduced with the FK2. They have been further refined for the FK8. Um, the FK8 also had a big change in the rear axle, introducing a multi-link suspension instead of the H-beam and also the two-piece brake disc in order to minimize brake deformation at high speed braking. Yeah, all these parts, all these components have been further optimized for the FL5, the new Civic Type R. Um, of course, the center offset, which is responsible for the torque steer, has been minimized according to the new suspension geometry. But also in order to stabilize the camber geometry. So the camber is, is this angle. Um, especially under high side forces, we wanted to maintain a high camber stability for that. We have increased the rigidity of the knuckle, the lower arm, but also the dumper fork so that we have a 16% higher camber rigidity um, against the previous generation. Brakes. One of the big improvements on the new Civic Type R are the brakes. On one hand, we have optimized the master power characteristics. We have reduced the so-called jump value, where the actual assist will start from 450 Newton to 400 Newton, so you have a better controllability. But also, the engineers had put a lot of emphasis in brake cooling, so that we now have a dedicated uh, brake cooling duct with some 
air baffles to guide the air really effectively to the brakes. So we have also positioned the air duct where basically the rum air is the highest. And uh, well, we had to sacrifice something that was the fog light, but um, we found it more important to improve the brake performance. And as a result, um, after five laps, for example, here in Suzuka, actually the brake pads temperature is 60 degrees lower than on the previous generation. That's quite a lot. The steering. As you know, the electric power steering works with a torsion bar, and the torsion bar needs to see a certain elastic deformation in order to sense the torque the input torque of the steering. So that was always a bottleneck. That was the upper limit where you could actually reduce the or increase the rigidity of the torsion bar. You, you couldn't go higher because otherwise the system wouldn't detect and sense the torque amount. So what the engineers simply did, they increased the resolution by a factor six so that now um, the path was opened in order to increase the rigidity of the torsion bar, in this case by 60%. And this, of course, makes the steering much more direct. Um, in this optimization, they also changed the tie rod ends by a very high rigid configuration in order to really have a direct steering feel. So for the nerds, um, on the right side, you can see the histogram of the steering against uh, the steering angle and the wheel turning angle. Ideally, it would be a, just a line, but of course, you have some elasticity in the system, so you always have a hysteresis, but you can see immediately as a comparison between the blue um, curve, this is the previous, against the red, that's the new one, um, the response, so the start, of turning the front wheels against steering angle has been shortened. The response is much better. And also the effectiveness. So this means the steering input and the wheel turning is now also much more than on the previous generation. So here are once again all the improvements on the suspension on the left side for a smooth movement, but also for a high rigidity. And then on the right side, um, small explanations regarding the active or the adaptive damper system. The adaptive damper system, um, this has also been further optimized. It's a system that can directly react in real time, in milliseconds, against the input of the car so that it can also control especially the pitch movement under braking, but also the pitch movement under acceleration in order to minimize the dynamic weight distribution between front and rear in order to maximize the traction. And this is something you will definitely feel today when driving both on the circuit but also on the public road. And also mid-corner, the roll movement is being controlled by the adaptive damper system. Now, the signal of the um, adaptive damper system, just to go back one um, once again, is also used for something else. Um, I will come to that later, but just keep in mind that the stroke um, information, but also all the acceleration information um, from the adaptive damper system will be used for another functionality. The wheels. This is a further um, development of the so-called limited edition wheels we had introduced for the predecessor. Um, now, since the geometry of the suspension and also due to the wider tires, we are now using 265 tires instead of 245 tires. Um, the maximum load on the wheels have now shifted from the outside to the inside so that we actually changed the um, configuration of the rim <coughs> to a so-called reverse rim. So for the reverse rim, the smallest inner diameter is now on the inside. Normally it's on the outside, 
but now it's on the inside. In order to have a very high form stability under lateral acceleration or lateral movement. And um, this also brings a positive side effect before, because um, the inner, the smallest inner diameter is now on the inside. So basically, the wheel looks one size bigger than a normal rim. And we have uh, actually reduced the size from 20 to 19 inch in order to reduce also the weight, especially the weight of unsprung mass. Um, but the 19 inch wheel actually look like a 20 inch wheel. So if you, if you compare outside um, the two cars, the FK8 and the FL5, if you look at the rims, even the 19 inch look like 20 inch. Now let's talk about uh, driving modes. I think uh, they, um, they are also quite common now for other Honda models. You can select between comfort, sport, and also the plus R mode. The plus R is being activated by a dedicated switch in one operation. Um, and this changes the six preset parameters for engine steering, suspension, sound, and so on. <coughs> but there is also an individual mode where you can actually combine the parameters according to your preference. And now the log R. This is a um, further improvement and enhancement of the current log R system. So starting with the display, if you press the plus R button, this is actually what you find in front of you, a very sporty meter display a digital ref counter, just like in a Formula One car, with the gear information in the center. Then on the top, um, you have the LED ref indicators, which should uh, give you a warning when you are just about to run into ref limit. And then on the lower side, you have on one hand the stopwatch function. For Estoril, I think the circuit is already um, included in the system, so it will automatically recognize the start and finish line to start your lap. Some vehicle parameter display, you can choose six out of these 12 in order to display, and on the right side you can either, either display the G-meter or some of the animations of the vehicle parameters. Now this is what I was talking about um, with the adaptive damper system, the stroke signal and the stroke speed signal, and also all the lateral, longitudinal, and your acceleration information are now being utilized in order to display the so-called tire friction circle. Maybe you have heard about it. This is the amount of, let's say, friction force a tire can transmit to the road. And this is um, actually divided into a lateral component and a longitudinal component. Therefore, it's a circle. So the white circle here is indicating the maximum tire force this particular tire can develop in theory. Then the yellow circle displays the maximum tire force the tire can produce at this moment. And this real-time um, tire force at this moment is being calculated by the amount of the stroke from the adaptive dampers because the stroke is equivalent to the load which is put on that particular wheel and this has been done for all the four wheels in real time. And then it can also indicate the tire force you are actually producing at this moment. So how much tire force the driver by his driving skill is now creating. So the closer you come with your tire force to the maximum possible tire force at this moment, the better, of course. And this is also the secret behind how to improve, for example, your lap time, how to balance the tire force on all four wheels. And using this information, the system also can give a scoring, an evaluation of your driving skill on, for example, a lap, maybe here in Israel or in Suzuka. And it can also give you points 
and will rank you in uh, a driver rank um, starting from C, B, A, S, and S+. Plus. So these are exactly the same ranks uh, you find at Honda R&D when going through a test driver education. Yeah, quite interesting uh, feature, also as an enhanced feature for interacting with the car. It can also give you some advice how you can become better in driving. And last not least, safety features. Just to mention that the Civic Type also incorporates all the state-of-the-art safety and driver assist system, you know, from the base Civic EHEV of course, accept all these which are not possible for manual transmission, but in order to maintain a load of fun and also uh, a dynamic and safe drive, everything is prepared um, from vehicle side. And this is also exactly what I would like to wish you today. Loads of fun, safe drive and enjoy the car. Thank you very much.